Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I'm Frank Clark, and on behalf of my fellow board members, I want to thank you for coming today. The purpose of this hearing is compliance by the board with the school code provisions regarding amending the 2017 budget. Madam Secretary, please state for the record the notice procedure for this hearing. Thank you, Mr. President. Notice of this public hearing was published in the Chicago Sun-Times, a newspaper of general circulation in the city of Chicago on October 5th, 2017, and posted on the cpsboe.org and cps.edu website on October 5th, 2017. The amended budget was posted on the cps.edu website on October 5th, 2017, in accordance with the school code. I will now read into the record the public notice as published. Notice Public Hearings FY18 Amended Budget for the 2017-2018 Fiscal Year Chicago Board of Education, commonly known as Chicago Public Schools. To whom it may concern, public notice is hereby given by the Chicago Board of Education that it has prepared an a FY amended budget, FY18 Amended Budget for the 2017-2018 Fiscal Year in tentative form and that five copies thereof available for public inspection have been filed and are now on file in the Office of the Board of Education of the City of Chicago, commonly known as Chicago Public Schools, 1 North Dearborn Street, Suite 950, Chicago, Illinois, 60602, and available at www.cps.edu slash budget. And that said, Board of Education will hold two public hearings upon said amended budget on the 10th day of October 2017. Chicago Public Schools Loop Office, 42 West Madison Street, Garden Level Board Room, Chicago, Illinois, 60602, hearing time 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., registration 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., and Chicago Public Schools Loop Office, 42 West Madison Street, Garden Level Board Room, Chicago, Illinois, 60602, hearing time 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., and the registration from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Dated at Chicago, Illinois, October 5, 2017, Chicago Board of Education by Frank M. Clark, President, and attest Estella G. Beltran, Secretary. Mr. President, I would like to also note for the record the members who are present here today. And we have Member Furlong. Present. We have uh, Member Dr. Hines. Present. We have Member Ward. Present. And President Clark. Here. We have four members present. There is a quorum, and I would also like to recognize Forrest Claypool, our CEO, and Ronald Marmer, our general counsel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's begin with the amended budget, uh, budget presentation, and that's Michael Sikowski. Michael. Thank you, President Clark, and good afternoon. My name is Mike Sikowski. I'm the Assistant Budget Director for Chicago Public Schools, and I'm here to give you an overview of the FY18 amended budget. To begin, on August 28, 2017, the Board approved a $5.75 billion FY18 budget. This budget assumed $569 million in new revenue, 300 of which uh, would come from the state. And at the time, we had planned for $269 million to come from additional local resources. The amended FY18 budget does two things. It specifies the initial framework provided for the $569 million in new resources, um, and most of which is coming from Senate Bill 1947, which has now become Public Act 100465, passed by the state. And then the amended budget also details the changes to the charter school funding formula uh, mandated in the um, Senate Bill 1947. Um, the original budget included a contingency for this potential change to the charter school funding. Uh, one important thing to note is that the increased state and local revenue in the amended budget provides more stability for classrooms and puts CPS on stronger financial ground. Um, district schools, due to this stability, were held harmless for $35 million in enrollment-based funding declines during the 10th day budget adjustments. So the first major change in the FY18 amended budget is the detail behind the $569 million in um, assumed revenues in the original budget. Uh, the original budget had assumed that we would receive $300 million from the state. Um, this has come through, plus another $4 million through the um, formula included in the final bill that was passed. Um, to cover the 269, we have this 4 million from additional 4 million from the state, 130 million in an increase to the property tax levy for teacher pensions, 80 million dollars from the city of Chicago 
for school security and student safety funding, and then $55 million through debt refunding savings and purchasing savings um, done internally. So this leaves us with a balanced budget and no gap in um, assumed revenue. The second major change in the amended budget are the changes to charter school funding. Um, Public Act 100465 requires CPS to set charter tuition rates between 97% and 103% of the district's per capita tuition rate. This is the way that the state calculates the cost of educating each student in the district. Um, before this change, the state mandated funding in the range of 75 to 125% of what we call the PCTC charge, which allowed CPS more flexibility in setting tuition rates. We previously used the student-based budgeting model similar to the way that we budget district schools um, to set budget for charter schools. So charter schools would receive an SBB um, rate at the same rate that district schools received, and then they would receive a non-SBB non rate per student to account for the in-kind services that CPS provides to district schools, like operations, security, um, and central office services. Uh, the changes um, due to the change in law will increase charter school funding in FY18 by an estimated $37 million. In summation, um, the FY18 original budget was $5.749 billion. And with the changes in the amended budget, the final budget is $5.699 billion. That concludes my presentation. Questions, board members? Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. So let's proceed with today's public comment segment. Madam Secretary, please share the rules for public comment. Thank you, Mr. President. For the record, I would like to note that registration for this public hearing was held between the hours of 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Individuals who register to speak will have two minutes to comment, and I will call speakers in the order of registration. This hearing will conclude after the last person who has signed in to speak has spoken or at 3.30 p.m., whichever occurs first. When called, please state your name, and I will proceed by calling um, the first speaker, Mr. President, and we have uh, Carol Coker, and she will be followed by uh, the last speaker, Deborah Haas. Okay. Ms. Coker? Hello. My name is Carol Coker. I'm a, I am here today as a mother to tell you that I am excited there is a budget and that CPS is taking a big step towards treating all public school students fairly. I have two students that attended Calis Maria Charter School, both with IEPs. I had the support of the teachers that was there to help me to support them and they succeeded to honor roll students. I have one in college at Graceland University, and I have one in high school at Mission College Prep. I appreciate the work the CPS has done to get this budget, and I was alongside you fighting for SB 1947 to pass. I hope CPS continues to work with our charter family to do right by our kids and set the budget to fund charters fairly. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you, Ms. Thank Coker. You. Deborah Haas, please. It's like Groundhog Day. So as you know from my earlier um, uh, uh, being here, that I am um, with Raise Your Hand. My name is Deb Haas. And we are concerned about this revised budget in part because you're taking on increased expenses with no ongoing revenue source identified. And I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about um, the transparency of this process. So um, think back, all of you, to the last time you had one of these meetings in a neighborhood. Can you even remember? President Clark, have you ever been at a budget meeting in a neighborhood um, outside the loop? So I'm respectfully asking that you think about having opportunities for families to come and fight for their schools um, when they can, when they're not at work, and um, at times and in places that are work for us. I'm also asking you um, to think about the information you make available. 
A fully revised budget book was not posted on the CPS website. Um, the online interactive reports don't um, show the changes between the original and amended budget, making comparisons nearly impossible. And um, just as one example, the revised budget summary claims $55 million in debt and purchasing changes, but there's no detail. The second thing I want to talk to you about this round is the fighting for our students and for revenue for our students. So the city had put $269 million on the table for us in CPS, and we need every penny of it. I want to know why you aren't out there pushing for a bigger TIF surplus, for, to pushing for other sources of revenue from our mayor. Um, this year, the CPS in its budget received $65 million less than last year in TIF support. We need it more than ever. You've cut our budget, not just once a year, twice a year at the school level. Our schools are suffering and we need your support. You've, the lack of transparency in this process and your um, inability Haas. to address the needs violate the trust that you have with the parents and the taxpayers of the city. Thank you for your comments. Mr. President, this concludes the public comment segment. Board members, questions or comments? I just want to ask, when will that information be online that she mentioned? Is it online yet? So the current, the current amended the budget, proposed budget, is available online at cps.edu slash budget. That's all of it. But, it, not, but the one, not the one that, not one that would allow us to compare line by line changes. Not the existing budget. Yeah. So the, the existing budget is detailed in the previous version of the budget book, which is, which is online. The interactive reports have been updated to reflect the amended FY. Okay, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, this concludes our hearing. Thank you all very much for coming.